Greetings, citizens of the internet. You can call me Nitro Indigo, and welcome back to my extremely riveting Let's Play of Kirby's Dreamland 3. In the last episode, we did the first three stages of Ripper Field, and for these last two of, for stages two and three, I had to redo them because I missed the heart star the first time. In today's riveting episode, we are going into the fourth stage. I don't know why I emphasised we like that. Also, when I quit the game I had kind but I guess like leaving the game and entering it again gets rid of your animal friend that's a bit stupid but anyway we're going into stage four of ripple field where there is a frog first of all I really like how this level looks because you have like these waterfalls that slow you down well they don't really slow you down they prevent you from going up as they limit your jumping ability but I also really like um how it looks because well the pillars go in front of you but it's like the ruins of like a palace, but it's a really nice looking palace. It's kind of like how I like it when the levels like seem to tell a story of some sort. It doesn't have to be an interesting story, but like how all the ruins on um, um, Rockstar in Kirby 64, it tells some kind of story because there's lots of automations and the planet looks like it's been destroyed and there's like a ruined fort that really does look like a fort and not just a cute and marketable place. Anyway, for this we will need well, we don't need Kine, but Kine would make it significantly easier to get this um, level's heart star, so we are going to get him. And it's like, I like all this whole trim pattern, reminds me of the blue trim wall from Animal Crossing, which I have like an emotional attachment to because it was always like, well, because I had it in my house in Let's Go to the City, aka City Folk. Anyway, we need to find the door that is not an enemy, which is a differently coloured to all the others. And then there's an auto-scrolling section coming up. Basically, we need to find the right door to go through to get the side quest thing, and which is the frog spoiler alert. And getting Spark with Kind will help us see what that place is you saw it in the last video but i didn't use it for long because it's only really useful for uncovering hidden doors and stuff basically spark kind would be helpful for this but he's not required i don't think you can get the spark ability in this section And that really was a stalactite also, as opposed to a stalagmite also. Yep, here's the hidden door. If you have the spark ability, you can see it. Because this hidden door leads to... Also, there's a petal thing over there. Leads to... Besides a bunch of star bits. Like, this is Mario Galaxy. Or Spirit Tracks, which has the star piece, which is also in 10 dogs plus cats. Um, this... A mini boss. This mini boss is called Captain Stitch. I don't know why he's called Captain Stitch, but he is a non-invincible Gordo. And spoiler alert, he gives you the Needle ability. That's what it's called, not Spike Needle. And the ability I was called an Umbrella is technically called Parasol in every Kirby game. Oops. I am just really doing badly at this, aren't I? I'm really feeling it like I'm Shulk or something. Yeah, Kain, if you couldn't tell, is not very good out of water because he's a fish out of water. Like that character from Chicken Little. But not. Okay, while I'm here, I suppose I should talk about something that bothers me. Great moments in LPing. Since, like, um, the summer, like, since July, I've been submitting a lot of things to them through Twitter. But the only one of them that's appeared on that channel so far is the one where Maryland ad-libs in the cutscene where it's revealed that Quagsire is a sir, although I don't think they intended him for him to be literally a knight with a registered trademark of Nitro Indigo. But like, I didn't really think that one was that funny, but then meanwhile, like, literally every week you will get something from either the Runaway Guys or Nico B, or both. And I, like, they already have the one press L to P channel, and they understand that the Runaway Guys, basically, which I mean the actual Runaway Guys channel and their individual channels, I understand that they're Let's Players and they have much of a right to be on there as anyone else, but it just gets a bit tiresome after a while. Now, I know it feels a bit hypocritical because I quit the subreddit r slash movie details because people kept complaining whenever you posted something Pixar on there, and eventually the mods gave into that and they said so they could only post on the weekends, and yet we need the ability to get the frog. But 
The fifth and series, so on a subreddit anywhere anyone can post, but like great moments, great moments in LPing is a YouTube channel which gets two videos once per week. Like it uploads two videos at the same time every Friday. And so sometimes I like to jokingly call it great moments in the front of my guys because that's basically what it is. And it's really annoying because like I've sub listed, submitted a lot of um, clips to them, but I don't really want to tell. And I like I sometimes like to rant about my frustration with people, but I don't want to disclose what I've submitted it because of, what I've submitted to them because I want it to be a surprise for the parties involved. And here's the end of the level. I like this background, it's like hexagons but not because they have lines in the middle of them and they're a bit, I think, uh, I don't even know what it's supposed to be. I don't actually like how this checkerboard looks now that I think about it because it just looks a bit out of place compared to the whole pastel game, it just looks a bit out of Sonic and for some reason it kind of reminds me of the back half of Sunny Beach and Spyro 2 which tessellating hexagons are the let's play of. Also music. It's just also music. Here's something that annoys me. The first um, the music that was playing in the last level called Ripplefield 1 and the music that's playing in this level, Ripplefield 3, have both been remixed in some games, but R Ripplefield 2 has them, which is like my favourite song in the game. Well, it's not really a song, but, but I don't really like how it, the word music is a mass now, because like, song technically only means when it has words. Hello, Joe. But music is a bit of a grammatically awkward word because it's a mass noun. I mean, piece of music just sounds a bit weird, like piece of cake, but not. But anyway, Ripplefield 2 had a remix on the Kirby Cafe CD, is what I'm trying to say. And now there are geometric shapes. You know, there's a lot of places in the game which just have, like, shapes in the boundaries, I guess you'd call them. We need to kind to the first half of this level, but as you can see from the um, image preview thing, and by the image pre preview thing, I mean the icon underneath the level, we need kind to get through this because otherwise it just loops you back because you can swim against comments. But anyway, we need pitch for the rest of this level, this level side quest. And while he is my favourite animal friend, it's a bit hard to use him in this particular level and it is a really easy to lose kind in this section. And there is a badly shaded bat and like, and not badly shaded, it's like literally got three colours in it, I can tell. Because if you couldn't tell I'm playing this on Wii U Virtual Console because there was the whole startup thing that I showed at the beginning of the first episode. And now the geometric- Oh, yeah, this is what I meant you can use kind lose kind in this level. Action. Yeah, we do need kind- Well, you can exit the level when you're act when you before you've actually played it. What am I talking about? Anyway, I will see you when we get kind back. And are in the room I just lost kind in. Anyway, this level side quest involves escorting kind to the end no kind ex exporting pitch to the end of the level. Did I say call him Rick by accident? I don't know. We need to escort pitch to the end of the level, but we need to use kind to get through that first. And here's the issue with the hammer this wall which requires two abilities to get through. And I don't really like it when like game in game design where I accidentally summoned Gooey and because the B button just wasn't working, I wasn't pressing it enough, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, we need Kirby to go through here. Anyway, I don't like it in game design where basically instead of like making obstacles naturally put into the environment, it just like says, use this thing here. Like I like it in like the early handheld Zelda games where this whole style of progression is you can't go here until you get, you can come back here later, but it's not really in this game or later Zelda games, except Breath of the Wild maybe, but I haven't played that because I'm worried I might lose dedication and I don't have a Switch, but I do have a Wii U, but no one plays the Wii U version apart from some people. If only official Nintendo magazine were around now to review Breath of the Wild. Yeah, official Nintendo magazine. It was like a really big part of my childhood because I can't use stone just yet or rock or whatever it's called. Official Nintendo magazine, it was a big part of my childhood. It gave me something to look forward to every month. And then in 2014, when all the good games were coming out, it just unceremoniously ended because Nintendo wanted to focus on online communication with their fans more. But don't worry, the Sony and Microsoft magazines still exist. This is specifically in the UK, but Nintendo Power also ended before Official Nintendo magazine did. It's just like really stupid. Like, I was only finding them with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and it's like, oh lol, we've ended. And that issue came out not long before Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire would have come out, and they got released in the Europe a week after everywhere else for no reason whatsoever. Please tell me this is just an optional side room. 
No, it isn't. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's the thing with this game. Sometimes you just get a bit lost in levels because you don't know which not which one way is not which way is optional and which way is not. But we can get we. Oh my word! Oh my word! What have I done to deserve this? Anyway, I need to find the fire ability. It, there's a side optional side room leading to where you can get the fire ability, which is here, I think, actually. Anyway, what I was saying about official Nintendo magazine is that towards the end of their lifespan, it felt like they were trying too hard to be funny and to like say making points about the games. Like they kept complaining, like they're trying to make a point about how people use it for kids as an excuse to make a game lazy, but or make a game lazily as an adverb, I should say. But then, like in their review of the Crudes game, they list off a bunch of criticisms and then put like all things you could argue wouldn't bother kids so it's like they undermine their entire argument and then they also mark down gates to infinity for being a kids game oh my goodness go away i guess i'll have to keep him for now we don't need fire anymore anyway I need to find the rocky. Don't get cocky, it's going to get rocky. We're going to move down to the next to jockey. Oh no, please tell me that rocky respawns. Oh my word. He does we just over here well I got a bit aggravated for nothing you should see me when the internet's being a bit slow actually don't because it's incredibly annoying I just sing at my laptop until it works and we shall continue on our merry way finally hallelujah Merry Christmas and other words Actually, the squids aren't really shaded consistently with the rest of the characters either. I don't know what the squids are called. Once again, on screen text will tell you what the squids are called. Oh wait, they're called squishy, aren't they? the rest of the level which is good because he's my favorite but then like also anyway official nintendo magazine they also like kept trying too hard to be funny like in the like early days the, there weren't many games on wii u so in the best of the games section they just had to put on random games with scores as low as 50 percent in order to fill the space which is what caused me to sell epic mickey 2 after not owning it for very long and i just missed that invincibility candy but anyway and just kind of got really annoying after a while and they also like marked down gates to infinity for being for kids as well basically but um something about gates to infinity just doesn't click with me and it's not i'm not sure what it is and i know it sounds a bit petty but it's probably the color palette because their things are like oversaturated yellow and stuff and it just looks unpleasant on a really subconscious level like they like any scene with lots of yellow in it in cars too also looks really and pleasant to me on a subconscious level i like this weird right not lens flare bubble effect in the foreground because like first two i think it's bloom shaded but i don't really know how cgi animation works also whenever mr enter mentions he hates the fact that he hates cars on deviant art i die a little inside even though i knew it's even though mr enter was how i learned that you're just supposed to hate cars because like in official nintendo magazine they were also complaining about how planes sucked with, because of the tie-in game which is how I actually learned about planes, but um, 
I didn't realise, I still didn't realise you were supposed to hate cars. And by, I'm saying supposed in imaginary air quotes, the tone of voice you use when you're doing air quotes. Because, well, it's, you're not contractually obliged to hate a work of fiction in order to live. Also, to be honest, lots of people say planes is bad, but literally the only time I've seen anyone explain why it's bad is on its YMMV page on TV Tropes. And TV Tropes, as you may, may or may not know, is the killer of opinions. By the way, the spring enemies are called Bouncy. Bouncy singular. Hello, Pitch Mama. That is literally her name. Her name is literally Pitch Mama. Between recordings, I do look up what all the characters are called on the Kirby Wikia. And now I don't know what to talk about. Yay! Well, besides that, there's a level here. There's a level here, you don't say. Oh, look, I like how it looks like we've gone from one end of the island chain to the other, but I don't really like how these maps look, because I like it when you get like a feeling of you're progressing for an area in platformers and stuff, but this doesn't really give me that feeling, because the areas don't really have much schematically in common. It kind of looks like they're stitched together. Also, like the background, it kind of reminds me like center parks. It's very pretty and now we're on a beach and the sand slows you down. And we have these characters. I'm not going to use either of them. Yay! They see me rolling and they hating. Just checking my notes I was because I have a list of how to get all the heart stars in the game. Because I had to resort to game facts the first time I played this. This game doesn't tell you anything, in fact, because it has no text in it. Well, it does have text, it's not really much at all. Even less than the average Kirby game. In fact, if you couldn't already tell. Like, there's not even... The pause menu doesn't even explain what your cock abilities do because, well, they only have to do one thing so it's easy to tell, easy to tell you for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know, this kind of reminds me of Ice Cream Island from Kirby's Adventure. And I noticed how, like, tropical areas in Kirby games look. We have, like, all the weird land ground that looks a bit like a pineapple or a palm tree. And once again, the incredibly sharp grass and more starfish that aren't pulsating and now they just look like regular stars. Mm. Anyway, this is a room where there are these multiple cannon blob things. We need to take the top one first of all. And I almost missed it. Then we need to take a bo the bottom green blob. Bottom. Like the Ram's bottom guy from Despicable Me 2. And then we need to take the second from the top, also known as this one. Because all the others lead to shorter corridors. They do lead to doors, but they... they but this door leads to this place where there are these chain link things that are on that are on cubes and um, star blocks, that's what they're called. I have just run out of things to talk about now that I've talked about, exhausted my subjects of um, Great Moments in Alpine and a fish on Nintendo magazine. I can't think of anything else to say, so let's talk about the game. Once again, we have the geometric shapes. And what is in these rooms? Oh, well, I've already noticed because I've played this game before. Basically, in this game, you have to reshape some blocks, and we have to make that these blocks in here look like the non-star blocks in the other place. And don't worry if you get something wrong. If you leave the room, it will just go back to normal. And I like this weird star overlay. It might look a bit weird because I'm playing this in HD through a HDMI on a Wii U, but maybe if you look at it on an analogue television, it looks better. 
But it is a pretty cool effect nonetheless. But I don't really know why there's stars underwater. It's like raining confetti upwards. It's very surrealist. Oh, by the way, I don't really get why, like, the medium of animation allows you to do whatever you want. So why is it like animated films from here and I forgot from recent years and I forgot that I didn't have the cutter anymore? Um, why is it that lots of recent animated films have tried to look as realistic as possible instead of like trying to have their own identity? I mean, Inside Out was very creatively designed, but then you have like the good dinosaur or something. I don't really have much of an opinion on the good dinosaur because I wasn't thinking critically like the one time I saw it on DVD. But I like the T-Rexes, they remind me of cars for some reason because they look, act like they came out of that movie but in a good way if that makes any sense. And here are more pineapple palm tree ground things. And parasol pitch which is alliteration is just the best. Yeah, I just noticed the pitch doesn't have outlines either, it looks a bit like the bats actually. The bats probably have a name and these Tamagotchi looking things are called propellers. And in Kirby 64 they're called propeller bombs. And the bomb ability isn't in this game, spoiler alert. There are only seven abilities in this game. And six animal friends. Well there's an eighth ability but spoilers. Because I don't want to spoil the game because this is a let's play and it would kind of suck for people who haven't played this. There is an 8th ability but it only happens during the final boss. I will not give away any more details. I will not tell you what the final boss is. Spoiler alert, there are credits at the end of this game. Oh my gosh, this is actually really amazing! It's like... And then we get a heart star from this thing. Also, what's up with those weird bushes? And now we are on to the boss of Ripple Field, which is Acro, Orca backwards. In a cave. I kind of forgot what the boss arena looks like because, spoiler alert, there's a boss rush in this game and. All of the arenas that the bosses are in look different in the boss rush. Well, there's a boss rush in lots of Kirby games, actually. Even the first one, though. This one, it's not like in Kirby Dreamland where you have to, or Kirby Max Attack, where it's like before you have to face the final boss. It's a thing you unlock after beating the game. But well, I was not really telling you of giving away the story, so I don't think that counts as spoilers. Plus, this game came out in 1997. I think it's fair to talk about a bonus feature in it. Meanwhile, people have already beaten Super Mario Odyssey, which I also don't want to play besides the fact that I don't own the Switch because I'm worried I might lose dedication. And this does really does not... And I died. And this really does not work well underwater. Wow. Yeah, I don't like when you die in a boss, instead of just restarting a boss battle from the beginning, you have to get sent out of the, the level and have to reselect it from the map. It's a minor inconvenience. Also, Acro here is defying the laws of physics and biology and everything. Oh, also, here's a word that you can learn if you didn't know it already. Hydrodynamic is things that are streamlined and cut through water. So, like, dolphins are hydrodynamic. It's the water version of aerodynamic. Also, planes are shaped like whales. Actually, what would you call that kind of shape? The plane shape, whale shape, shark shape, etc. I coined a term, but I don't really know enough Latin or Greek to do it. And also another thing that's shaped like that is like maybe Ichyphus, no, not Ichyphosaurs, they're not really that kind of shape. But Mosasaurs or Plesiosaurs? And did you know that Mosasaur means almost a lizard and apparently they're the ancestors of monitor lizards? So that's a thing. Yay, biology, and why does the spot pattern just stop? Oh, here's a funny story. Acro is also a boss in Kirby 64. And I remember, like, I beat the boss, and then just as I was getting the crystal shard at the end of it, because you get crystal shards after you beat each boss. Also, why do they not have 64 crystal shards? It's a missed opportunity. They're like 70 odd in the game. But anyway, in Kirby 64, I beat Acro, and then I fell into a bottomless pit. And so I had to do him again. And I have just completely failed to blow any of these thingies towards them. They look kind of like those Cocoa Pops balls. Cocoa Pops are a chocolate flavoured cereal for, you, for those of you who don't know. Also, I didn't realise.
realised until it was like I read it somewhere that Acro was Orca backwards. I just thought it had something to do with acrobatics because whales are good at because he is like acrobatic and stuff because he can somehow stand on his tail like there's a shark tail or something. I've mentioned two videos at um, videos. Um, I've mentioned two animated movies of the Mysterious Mystery Enter reviewed in this video. And amazingly, I've gone this far if I'm mentioning Cars 2, so that makes three. Um, he's going to review the Emoji Movie in the near future. Check the release date of this video for people watching this in the future where we all have telepathic internet. But purification cutscene. Time in my extremely riveting let's play of Kirby's Dreamland 3, we will be taking on the third level world place thing, Sand Canyon. Until then, stay interesting! <laughs>